Now, cylindrical coordinates are not the only coordinates that you can use. For, let's say, a spherically shaped object, you might prefer to use a coordinate system that is specially adapted to that geometry. This would be spherical coordinates. Now, in spherical coordinates, you have three variables to describe the location of a point. The first, rho, is the radial coordinate, the distance to the origin. The second is an angle, theta. It's the same polar angle that we've been using, but now it has a fancy name, the azimuth. And why does this have a fancy name? Well, it's no longer the angle. There's another angle denoted phi and called the inclination. This is the angle that you make with the z axis. Now, there are standard formulae for converting x equals rho cosine theta sine phi, y equals rho sine theta sine phi, and finally z equals rho cosine phi. You're probably going to want to remember these. Now, be, be careful with the bounds on these formulae and with the notation. Some are obvious. The radial coordinate has to be bigger than zero. The polar angle, the azimuth, goes from zero to two pi, but now we have this third angle, phi, the inclination that measures the angle to the z-axis, to the north pole if you like. So when phi equals zero, you're up at the North Pole. You sweep all the way down to the South Pole, and that is at phi equals pi. Don't let phi go from zero to two pi. You gotta be careful with that. Now you might want to transform back. You may want to remember these formulae. Maybe not. I don't know. They're a little complicated. The first is easy. Rho is square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That one makes a lot of sense. That's the Pythagorean theorem. You could express this in cylindrical coordinates as square root of r squared plus z squared, where r is that polar radial coordinate. And just as with cylindrical or polar coordinates, theta is arctan of y over x. Phi now is arctan of r over z, or if you like, arc cosine of z over rho. Now that's a lot of formulae. I don't always remember that. But the thing you have to remember is that even though inclination and azimuth are like latitude and longitude, they're not exactly the same. And you have to be careful. There is no consistent notation for spherical coordinates. People mix it up all the time. Some people, often physicists, wind up reversing the symbol for the azimuth and the inclination. They, they mix up the theta and the phi. Oh, why would you do that? And then, and then, they'll mess up the bounds on the inclination angle. They'll say, oh, no, no, no. When inclination is zero, that's the equator. So, so phi goes from negative pi over two to pi over two and the worst. The worst is when they exchange these symbols, r and rho, mixing up the radial variables between polar and cylindrical coordinates. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. But, but even though we're going to be consistent in the way we do things, you have to be really careful. When you see spherical coordinates in a book, in a paper, always check the convention and the bounds.